All right, back here on Gojo and Golik, everybody. It's a Miked Up Monday. It's presented by Wrangler. So let's dive into some of the sound around the league that went down following all of the action of Week 11 yesterday on Sunday. So there may have not been a team in the NFL here, guys, that needed to win more yesterday than the Cleveland Browns, as if playing the Steelers really wasn't difficult enough. Now without their starting quarterback, Deshaun Watson out for the year. You have DTR back under center, trying to avenge that ugly first start he had back in Week 4 against the Ravens. They ended up with the comeback, walk-off victory against their division rival. And here is DTR following that win. Um, you know, they believed in me. They trusted me. I trusted my teammates. Uh, the biggest thing I was telling myself all game is just stay disciplined, take it one play at a time. Uh, there's times in that game where, you know, if it was week four, I would have forced it. We had a tip pick, another tip pick or whatever it was. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, it's going to be night and day when I get out there. I've been working my tail off, and uh, I'm just glad my teammates were there with me. I mean, listen, he, it wasn't super pretty. In his defense, no. too, back in week four, he learned that he was starting that game, that game I think, an hour before it yeah. kicked off. But anywho, leads the team on that game-winning drive here, Junior, sets up the game-winning field goal, not including spikes as well. Thompson Robinson, 4-4, four, four, 39 yards on that final drive. And it backed up really a top-two defense here that is definitely more than good enough to get Cleveland to the postseason. Completely agree. And yeah, for DTR, this is like if you were trying to learn physics and you were going to do it by having to pilot the space station for your first rattle out of the box, going up against the Ravens and the Browns defenses in your first two NFL starts. You want to talk about the first time he plays a normal defense in the NFL, how it's going to feel like he just took the donut off the bat going up to the plate? Because what he had to weather uh, you know, on the other side, Oh, excuse me, he was going against the Steelers' defense. He has the Browns' defense on right. his side. Phrased that wrong. But still, the Steelers' defense, while numerically not the most daunting this year, we know traditionally still has some parts that are very good, still has some things that present a challenge in the AFC North of all divisions. And so, Dad, this is absolutely still a playoff team in the AFC right now. Yes. This defense is insane. Miles Garrett is absolutely front runner for Defensive Player of the Year great right now because this offense got to play it close to the vest. Wasn't a dominant dominant rushing performance wasn't a high-flying passing performance but it doesn't need to be when your defense is on the other side caving in the entire Steelers offensive outfit to the tune of Kenny Pickett throwing for 106 yards in this game yeah sacked three times in this one um ugly game just barely over 50 percent Though DTR threw the ball 43 times. I know some of those were spikes. It's tough to ask your young guy to throw it that many times. You'd like to see their running game a little bit better. Uh, at least next week they won't have a great offense to go against, but they will a great defense. You know who they play next week? Denver. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. I mean, so another tough test for DTR on that offense again, a Denver defense that has been money. But on the other side, a, a Cleveland defense, which is just incredible, against his Denver offense, which which has real trouble getting into the end zone. So interesting matchup there again, though Denver right now the hottest team in the NFL at four in a row. Uh, so I, I – they – Cleveland we, – Mike, we talked about this last week. Cleveland definitely in it. In a, in a deeper AFC, because of their defense, you're going to be in every single game, and a lot is thrown on their shoulders. And I think each game DTR gets a little more comfortable – that can only be good for the Browns. So I, the arrow is up there. Listen, this is still Baltimore's division to lose, I think. Yeah. Uh, still the best team in that division. Oh, yeah. And if the Pittsburgh Chiefs lose tonight, have... Baltimore's the number one seed in the AFC. Yeah, yeah. Um, Pittsburgh just obviously not there offensively. And Cincinnati, wow. I mean, just really been a, a disappointment. So, uh, But Cleveland right there. And then by the time you get to the playoffs, DTR has how many now games under his belt so it could it could become very interesting for the Browns, you know, kind of peaking at the right time with what they have, not the quarterback that they want, which was a former top five quarterback in the league. And even when Deshaun was playing this year, he wasn't that. While he was getting better, he still wasn't to that level. But I'm interested to see where DTR is by the end of the year as this team, I believe, gets into the playoffs. 
they did a bunch of the easy stuff to break in a young quarterback, got him on the move, used him in the design yeah. run game, got the ball out of his hands quick. All of it, smart stuff Kevin Stefanski's doing to try and help his rookie quarterback do well. I agree. They are capable of winning a playoff game with that defense. Yep. And on the other side, the Steelers got some long-term questions to answer because Kenny Pickett just does not seem to have the juice. Oh, I know Matt Cannon has been the source of everybody's ire, but that is just mm. not nearly productive enough. Emerson, what do we got next sound-wise? All right, dude. So we are used to Miami head coach Mike McDaniel, right, praising his high-powered offense, and we understand why. But here he is after yesterday beating the Raiders, giving the nod to his defense. We'll, we'll learn from the stuff that we can and, and get better from it. But ultimately, um, you know, it's, it's a team game. And, you know, when you do come up short offensively, you need somebody to pick up the slack and – to have two fumbles on the 30-ish yard line um, on your own, in your own territory and have a, that equals six points, I believe. Um, and then to, uh, you know, have, have a couple very timely interceptions. Um, you know, that's, that's what you have to do to win in the National Football League. You're not always going to um, supremely execute on one side of the ball or the other. So... Yeah, those timely interceptions. We're talking Jalen Ramsey here. He had yeah. two of them. Like, it, it's fair to doubt the impact, Junior, of a nearly 30-year-old cornerback who's fresh off that extended injury-related absence. But without him, the Dolphins probably don't survive the scrappy Raiders yesterday. No, Dad, that was probably my biggest takeaway, quite honestly, was, oh, okay, Antonio Pierce actually has these Raiders playing some ball because regardless of some of the injuries we talked about going into this game, they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Dolphins team that, while they're yeah. not the 70-point Dolphins, is still a very good outfit in this AFC. So a huge tip of the cap to them. You just couldn't overcome three interceptions by your rookie quarterback who's going out there and playing. We talked about DTR here for Aiden O'Connell and what he's done. That also falls into that category of, hey, you saw some of those growing pains when he was pressed into duty, but Jalen Ramsey absolutely deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, you know, I, I Jalen Ramsey does. And by the way, that last interception when he landed, I'd have thrown up right there on the field. He landed on the ball and his stomach. I mean, so when a dude like that who already has a lot of abs, you know, oh. gets hurt like that, just imagine what a fatty like us would happen if we <laughs> fell flat on our stomach from about eight feet in the air after he jumped for that ball. Uh, it was a fantastic interception. But, I, you know, so I wonder the Raiders, the direction they're going. My God, Hunter Renfro had five receptions. Hunter Renfro, we finally, you know, after a couple of years ago when he had, you know, a million receptions, he's like disappeared on this offense. It seems Adams, Jacoby Myers, Michael Mayer had four, Renfro five, so that they're getting into a rhythm there a bit. The defense had been playing well. Is this more about, Mike, we think the Raiders are going in the right direction, though you have a young quarterback who's making mistakes, or maybe Miami isn't what we thought Miami is. And we still we keep saying we get thrown by the 70-point game, uh, but it's a 500 team they were playing in the Raiders yesterday, and they, and they barely get by. I'd say a little bit of both is my cop-out answer uh, on that. Uh, TBD with the Dolphins. They definitely have been trending in the wrong direction, though. Let's get to the last bit of sound here quick, Emerson. What do we got? Okay, so no one expected the Texans. You want to talk about rookies throwing interceptions here. No one expected the Texans to be 6-4 and four at this point, except really for the Texans and C.J. Stroud not really worrying about outside expectations right now. We have expectations that we hold ourselves to and a standard that we hold ourselves to, and we started that back in OTAs. Um, and it's not about what everybody else thinks or what, what, we th what they thought we were going to be at this point. Um, it's about what we go put on that field. So um, it's, been, it's been really cool to play with, play with my teammates and build week in, week out. And uh, now that we put ourselves in a great position to, to go play for the division, man, it's really special. So um, this week is going to mean a lot. Um, Got to go practice really hard and put another great weekend in practice. And, um, and around Thanksgiving, you want to be playing your best football, and I feel like we're doing that. And uh, of course, you got to just eliminate the negative plays. But other than that, man, we're moving the ball really well. Defense is getting stops. Um, it's the NFL, you know. So um, every game is, is, is a fight and a battle to the very end. Um, and we're going to just keep going. Yeah, he compared himself to Steph Curry after that three interception game, saying, like, shoot or shoot, and he's just going to keep letting it ride. 
Yep, and he did just that. So uh, it was almost nice to know that C.J. Stroud was human at this point. I think that was my biggest takeaway after the first half where he had thrown for upwards of 250 yards and looked like he was going to maybe go on pace. I think we were doing the on-pace stats for over 500 yards in that game. We saw a little bit of humanity from him. The run game continued to show up against this porous Cardinals defense. And so the Houston Texans ultimately find a way and check another box.